Get your free chiropractic examination at the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic. Don't put up with back pain, headaches, neck and shoulder aches, loss of sleep due to pain, and many other musculoskeletal health problems. You don't need a referral, even if you've had a transport accident or work-related injury. For your free examination, phone the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic at 622 St Kilda Road, Melbourne. batons in their hands. They also had very large torches. People were in a state of panic, actually. Nobody knew what was going on. People were asking to go to the toilet to urinate. Um, some girls had to go to the toilet. We were told, no, just wait for the toilet. One, one girl that I saw just waited for an hour until she was getting her knees and crouching on the floor. They, they finally said, just go and she go to the toilet. And that was about an hour. She had to wait before she went. And other people waited long periods of time as well. Thing I know I've been jumping the chest with a torch by um, an armed officer. 
Alexa, who screamed at me to get up against the wall, put my hand above my head and stay there. And we were left in that position for about half an hour. Well, they were persistently abusing uh, patrons, people with what constantly told to shut up, people who asked um, after their rights, who, who tried to ask any questions, people who answered back to police, who simply sent to the back of the line because they knew we were going to be detained here for hours and they could hold people, well, for all that time and possibly longer. So some people were just being sent to the back of the line. Apparently, I'm told, they were very rough on the people at the back of the line as well. They had guns in their holster. They were hurling very abusive language and they were making sure people had their hands on their head or were, had their hands up against a wall and were um, physically and verbally abusing people. Ask all many people, I think the majority of officers were verbally abusing most of the patrons and physically pushing them against walls, um, pulling, pulling cigarettes from their mouths because at one stage they weren't allowed to smoke but then they allowed it. They they would if you didn't move when they told you to, then they would. Um, and they want to lift up like guys' testicles and look underneath and which I thought was pretty stupid after you'd just bent over. Yeah. You couldn't really hide much on that. I heard one girl walk up and she was like begging, can I go to the toilet? You can open the door and you can watch me. And I was like, no guys, no. TV. Hi, I'm Michael Pugh. And I'm Gwendolyn Birkin. And you're watching the Bentorama series. In the early hours of Sunday the 7th of August 1994, the Victoria Police burst into safety and strip searched 463 gay men, lesbians and their friends. People were forced to stand with their hands on their heads for hours, take off their shoes and stand in urine, strip naked in front of complete strangers and have torches shone up their arms. They were yelled at to be silent and told not to speak with their lovers. After all of this, the Victorian police responded to media criticisms of their behaviour in a typical Victorian fashion, denying that anything had happened. It was all a joke, they said. It was a jovial atmosphere. Intimidation, fear, physical abuse, false imprisonment and public humiliation. In Victoria in 1994, this is a jovial atmosphere. The incident is a worrying reminder of how police powers can lead to terror and abuse. Anyone confess with it? In the light of what happened that night, what should our attitudes be towards the police in Australia? While we have every right to be frightened of them, should we also be angry too? Or should we be looking for reconciliation? Should we be hoping for a change? And if so, how is it going to happen? Well, as I was saying, I really like her view. It's, um, it caters to gay men, lesbian women, drag queens, transsexuals, everyone, the whole gay community also attracts heterosexuals, gay friendly heterosexuals. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an ambience that just is, it's a great party atmosphere. And on, at about two o'clock, that ambience was just invaded by about 40 armed police who came in screaming things like, put your hands and heads up against the wall. So they were very aggressive, very abusive. Um, people were in a state of panic, naturally. Nobody knew what was going on. There was a bit of a tip-off that um, a raid was going to happen, but nobody expected the extent or the intrusive way that it was carried out. And so we were standing there for about 20 or 30 minutes before a friend of mine started to feel sick. So I said to him, do you want to go to the toilet? And he just walked off and gave one hand. So we weren't, we didn't realise that you weren't allowed to go to the toilet, either by yourself or with a police officer. So therefore, he went to open the door of the toilet and he was stopped by a police officer who just grabbed him and said, hey, what are you doing or something like that. Well, they came up to me and said, put your hands in here, you know, really sort of aggressively. I refused. I said, I'm not going to wreck this hairdo for anything. I've spent an hour getting this look like this and I refused to put my hands on my head. With that, they sort of moved away. I don't know how, quite how to take people like me. Being a um, post-op transsexual and a, a show, you know, I, I sort of stand out in the crowd. Um, 
So I don't think the police really know how to handle people like me. And we eventually got into the room where there were three police officers, all female. So we had gloves on. Um, there was my girlfriend, another girl I didn't know, who came in with me. And I had to take off my jacket and deal the um, contents out of my jacket. And then they looked through those. And then I was told to take my pants off and I had a body suit on. So she asked me to undo it and lift up. And I had to lift up the front and the back. And then um, she put her hand on the rim of my underpants and looked around. I was lined up, herded like cattle in this little line. And I was sort of trying to be camp and put people's you know, minds at rest and so that to alleviate the panic. Um, because naturally people were in a state of panic and confusion. Nobody knew exactly what was going to happen. No one was informed of their rights. Well, I personally definitely wasn't. Um, they came to me, they weren't sure what life put me in, the boys or, you know, the girls. And I was there with a couple of gay boys, so I wanted to stay with them. So I went to the boys' kids. During that time, I actually witnessed strip searches going on, so it was quite public, and they were particularly abusive in the boys' queue. After a couple of minutes, um, one of the cops came up to me and said, look, the female arm came up, said, oh, yes, so she's going to have to go to the girls' queue. So I did. I noticed a few girls who desperately needed to go to the toilet, and I'd asked police officers several times, and they said, no, no, stand back in line. And then there was this one girl who was just busted. She was running around, hands, uh, hands between her crutch. She just couldn't hold on. I finally got into the room, and so the police woman came up to me and um, asked me if I was wearing underwear, and I had I'd taken the liberty, my Victorian during the class, of removing it because it um, wrecked the line of my dress. So I said no. So she said, oh, take your shoes off and I hit your dress up. Just you know, a few I had seen people being totally stripped and I don't think she really knew what she was going to, to, to find. So for me, the strip search procedure was actually not as bad as it was for some. In fact, she was more intent on getting to me to remove my hair piece than she was getting me to remove my clothes. Like maybe I was catching something like that, really. The mainstream media ran with the story. The Age had front page stories. Neil Mitchell featured the story for three days. The news programs on all channels had reports. Everyone was outraged. Even Jeff Kennett came out to say that he thought it was disturbing. In all these stories, they kept on emphasizing that this was not a gay rights issue. It was a human rights issue. And that's one side of the story. The tasty of the lesbian and gay club, and that matters. You can't just ignore that fact because it is pretty suspicious. What makes us think it was an exercise in homophobia rather than a drug raid? Well, Peter Graham in charge of Asia Strip cannot think of a single other example of a nightclub raid where every patron was forcibly strip searched. Not one other example. Strange that. What's even stranger is what a failure this was as a drugs raid. Think about it. The police had had undercover officers there for weeks. Presumably they knew if anybody was selling drugs on the premises. 
And yet, they go in for an all-out raid and it's useless. The end result is that everything gets done from the floor. As a drugs raid, this was a waste of time. But as an attempt to humiliate and intimidate the gay and lesbian community, it was a great success. Nobody was charged with dealing, but 463 gay men, lesbians and their friends learned that they should be frightened of the police. If that was the aim of this raid, then it was a great success. Peter Graham had a damage limitation press conference. He said that, in fact, that there had been no difficulties with the raid. He said that the raid had been conducted in a jovial atmosphere. That is a lie. Well, I've got several portfolios, uh, but the one what you're interested in here today, I'll it, uh, I'm the liaison officer of the gay community. Yeah. My other portfolios are I'm uh, the liaison officer of the ethnic communities, Aboriginal communities, uh, industrial disputation, prison-related issues, and a couple of other portfolios. It's called the Police Ministry and Gay Liaison Committee, uh, and the purpose of the committee was to find ways and means of improving the relationship between the gay community and the police. How important are relations with the gay and lesbian community for the police in Victoria? Yeah, they're extremely important, but no more important than any other uh, community group. Um, the force uh, can't act alone within the community. We rely on community involvement, hence neighbourhood watch. Um, apathy within the community is no good. We need involvement from all groups. So, hence, uh, your question is, is we need uh, support from the gay and lesbian community, yes. Although well, good work has been done, the relationship as it now exists between gay men, lesbians and the police is patchy, very patchy indeed. Um, and it varies from police station to police station, it varies from police officer to police officer. And um, we find that some police are extremely sensitive to gay issues and very good in the way they handle things. Forge into situations and, and do nothing but create problems. So in terms of liaison, do you have any specific programs in place to encourage interaction and good relationships between the police and the gay and community? Well, we had the committee, as I said just earlier. Um, we also have the committee that lectures um, to recruits, uh, constables, in relation to the gay community. Um, there's, a, there's a number of other um, programs within the force um, which can be picked up by the, the, the gay community. Um, there is reported uh, a fair bit of apathy within the, the gay community because they don't wish to report crime to police because of this police-gay relationship. Um, I would uh, advise all members of the gay community, should they be subject or a victim of a crime, to come forward. There's no need for this um, them and us issue. Um, we can't do our job unless it's reported to us. We've had one example in particular where somebody was shot three times in the space of uh, a number of days by the same, by the same police uh, who said he recognised the car and take out the great delight in stopping these particular people. Um, but the, the, the other end of the spectrum is, is where uh, uh, gay men in particular um, are harassed and entrapped by police uh, when, when they're having sex in public places. Most people, I think, at some stage in their life have had sex in a public place, whether it's in the back of the SJ Holden somewhere, or whether, whether it's on a beach or whatever. And uh, gay men in particular seem to be open to harassment by police. Uh, in, in that particular case, we've had a number of instant, instances of that, where we believe that the treatment that two gay men may have had has been very different from the treatment that two heterosexuals doing the same thing in the same place on another occasion may have had from the police. Right. Would there be any consideration of, for example, actively recruiting from within the gay and lesbian community? No. Uh, we, don't, we don't actively uh, go out and target any specific group there, uh, ethnic, Aboriginal, uh, gay, whatever. We take the best what comes forward. One sexual preference is not a question. We're looking for the best possible police force uh, in Australia. Are you aware of the, the situation of gay and lesbian police officers? Are there any that you know who are openly out and involved in trying to do anything like this education? We, we know none in that category. Uh, we wish we did. We'd love to know some uh, police officers who are gay 
particularly the week of Torchy, uh, and try and get some kind of a feel for the, the issues that confront them and the issues that uh, we raise with the police, as seen from the police point of view. So it doesn't mean... No, no, they're very, very positive. Um, so, and, and one can understand that. I mean, uh, the, the particular pressures on gang members in the Midwest will still be quite considerable. Well, we're in a professional organisation. You know, it, we are here to service the members of the Victorian community. Now, I don't care whether they're Aboriginal descent, ethnic descent, Victorians or, or gay people. It doesn't worry me. We're here to service the Victorian community. If members are acting incorrectly, um, that should be brought forward to and reported to our internal investigations department or the Deputy Ombudsman Police Complaints. It's a very simple philosophy. If our people are doing the wrong thing, they should be reported. Okay. So, in answer to your question, people shouldn't be wary of police officers. We're here to help you. Now, to your knowledge, has the police force acknowledged that there's perhaps not to be done? Or that there's any problems in court? No. The, the, the police are adopting the same, the same rules and inquiries have been placed. The Ombudsman is getting into all of this. Until we get the report, we have no comment to make. Uh, were you aware that the case was already going to happen? And would it not have made sense for you to be present at a potentially delicate interaction with the yeah. Gaelican community? Alan, uh, as we discussed before, I'm not at liberty to discuss anything in relation to the Tasty Rail. Um, that's subject to an independent investigation by the Deputy Ombudsman, and uh, all comments will be left after the results of the investigation have come out. Right. have a pretty difficult job as it is, enforcing the law, and I think they put up with a lot of crap. But on that night, I really think they abused um, their role as police officers. I think they treated us just terrible. Like, I've never been treated that way before, and it was disrespectful, and it was, there was no need for it at all. And I was really shocked. So as for now, um, those particular officers I don't have any respect for. I think they have a very good attitude towards them as far as safety and it's concerned. No. It hasn't changed my attitude. No. They lived up to the reputation, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I've always respected the police a lot. I think they've got a very worthy job to do, a very difficult job to do. However, I also was aware that the, some police abuse their powers, particularly when it comes to minorities such as migrants, Aboriginal people, um, people who might live in housing commission apartments, young, you know, particularly say, young people in the western suburbs. Um, so I was always wary of police powers and police culture. However, after Saturday, after the, the raid on the early hours of Sunday morning, the 7th of August, I now realise that, in fact, the entire police culture is one of unlawfulness. And it's quite ironic that I pay taxes, along with other citizens, to pay for a police force that's meant to protect citizens when, in fact, the police force are harassing citizens. What can you do? What are your rights? Well, not a lot. Uh, under, under laws brought into control, folks, the police have the right to strip search anybody if they have reasonable suspicion that they are carrying drugs. As we saw at Tasty, reasonable suspicion can mean that you're simply on the premises of a gay and lesbian club. If they do want to strip search you, there's nothing you can do about it. There are guidelines which the police are meant to follow and the Fitzroy Legal Services has released some guidelines about the things that you should say. When the police first tell you they are going to strip you, tell them very clearly that I do not consent to this strip search. And if they do search you, tell them that you consider that to be an assault. 
Ask them why they believe you have drugs. Don't be intimidated by them. Tell them that you'll be getting legal advice and lodging a complaint. If they get your name and address, make sure you get their name, rank and place of work in writing. Legally, they have to give this to you. If they don't, they are breaking the law. Always be polite, but don't be intimidated. Find out who they are and make sure that you follow it up. Are you aware of your rights regarding strip searches and police raids? I am now, but I wasn't at the time. Um, I got in touch with the, uh, with the group Cobbett that yeah. are going against it. Um, and they basically said, you know, well, here's what they have to do and here's what they can and can't do. And I was just really shocked and thinking, oh, God. But I would also add, and I think it's very, very important, that while it's an isolated incident in that there was 400 odd people who were strip searched, it is not an isolated incident within our community that people are regularly strip searched. <coughs> I think the time has come for that power to be taken away from the police in its current form and to be exercised only, that is the strip search power, only upon the authority of a magistrate. I think it goes further than that. Uh, I think we need to have a Bill of Rights which will provide the legal basis to ensure that uh, whenever something like that happens, uh, ordinary citizens of Australia, <coughs> whether they live in Victoria or in Tasmania, can take action on the basis of an Australian statute and don't have to rely uh, on United Nations committees expressing a view. The operative factor appears to be that it was a gay bar. One might ask, and we ask, why did that particular place get picked out by the police for this extraordinary action? One has to look at the question of the attitudes of police officers, perhaps only a minority, but the ones who count, of discrimination and prejudice. Not everybody has the same stories to tell. From the information that came in on the telephones, I'm was led to believe that there were approximately 2,000 people on the premises and that the police were there fulfilling every day thanks to the bear that had been. Hmm. Introducing Mr. the new generation with new technology UHF, VHF antennas and satellite vision. If your reception on channel 31 is less than perfect, a Mr. Antenna technician can check your existing installation. Mr. Antenna is backed by the most sophisticated service available from the minute you call. From as little as $129, Mr. Antenna can replace your existing antenna and improve your picture quality. So ring 131149. That's 131149. Get the picture. Get your free chiropractic examination at the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic. Don't put up with back pain, headaches, neck and shoulder aches, loss of sleep due to pain, and many other musculoskeletal health problems. You don't need a referral, even if you've had a transport accident or work-related injury. For your free examination, phone the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic 
at 622 St Kilda Road, Melbourne. To the magic of television, bent television. Are we all set for a fabulous night? <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> fabulous. It's time for me now to introduce to you my gorgeous celebrity co-host, Jane Turner. Jane Turner, come on out. <laughs> Darling, where's Jane? Oh, darling, Jane couldn't be here tonight. She just wasn't up to it. Oh, my God, <laughs> it's Frantique. Yes, look, Jane's fabulous, though, isn't she? She's stunning. Darling, she's a beautiful she's an, actress. and A, oh, a yeah. very strong, dramatic actress. Yes, yeah, she's off doing a big feature film, so she couldn't be here tonight. Darling. <laughs> so you got me instead. Oh. Frantique, and it's fabulous to see you here tonight. But you really should have asked before you borrowed this bloody dress. Oh, come on now, Barbara, darling. You couldn't have got into this, you beached whale. <laughs> You've got to be a perfect size six to get into this one. I must admit, I haven't worn that since Gypsy Rose Lee was a little lass. <laughs> but anyway. Yes, hundred years ago. <laughs> well, if our Superb. lovely helper Charlotte would like to give you the names of the contestants, then let's get the show. Oh, superb bloody Fabarama. <laughs> All right. Right, who have we got? We've got gorgeous Lee Miller. Lee Miller? Lee. Come on out. Hello, Lee. <laughs> come on. Come on, Lee, darling. Oh. Next one, next one. Nine the Nile. Michael. Michael. Come out. Where is he, darling? Oh, oh, love the vest. Yes. And, oh, Chris. Darling, man of my dreams, come down. Chris, come out. Come on out. Oh. Yes, I'll just. Well, they look like a handsome lineup, don't they, Yes, friends? I'd have them all together if I could. If they'd have me, as they would. You've beat me to it, friends, Teague. Now, what do we know about the just Well, let me tell you, darling. You're going to do nails. Yes, he's yeah, giving you a little bit don't of a hand. Don't spend a nail, darling. All right, hang on. First contestant tonight is Lee. Hello, Lee. How are you? Lee, oh, Lee's compassionate and is sensitive and uh, doesn't take any crap from anyone. You can see that you've got written all over your gorgeous little mug. Yes. <laughs> okay, second up in the vest from hell, we've got <laughs> Michael Broderick of South Yarra, just around the corner. I'm tall, dark and handsome and make a shitload of money! Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and last but not least, and I can see that by the bold, Ooh. Chris White is from Ellywood and he's intelligent, sensitive, a damn good, ooh, something or other, F. <laughs> and I look about 10 years younger than I am, which makes him about 72. <laughs> That's it, darling. Well, darling, what a fabulous lineup. And yes. I think these boys look a bit thirsty, so we'll give them a drink while Frantique, we get to meet the dream date. Oh, I'm getting very excited, excuse me. All right, here he is. 
Is that your personal trainer friend, too? No, but he's stolen my earrings. <laughs> Doesn't know where to put them either, by the look of it. <laughs> Please oh, welcome. Is he special or what? Please oh, welcome his wallet, I think. Gay Games athlete, Team Melbourne, Sam Kongsman. <laughs> Don't mind me. Man of the hired help. Sam, how are we tonight? Oh, fabulous, Barbara, and you're looking, you're looking you both, right? stunning. You're not looking too bad yourself, young man. <laughs> now, darling, you are off to the 1994 Gay Games in New York, is that right? That's right, competing in uh, physique on, uh, for uh, Melbourne. You'd have to be a fool not to know that, wouldn't you? Now, I think you'll go very well, showing a bit of Aussie talent over there. Now, when does it all take place? Uh, I leave on Friday, and the Games actually start on the 18th. On the 18th, well, I can't wait for that event. Anyway, have a seat and we'll get on with the game. Now, of course, you'll be asking each contestant three questions and at the end of that, you'll be given 10 cents, 10 seconds, 10 cents worth of think music, okay? So we'll start with your first question to contestant number one. We'll just get them out of that little pocket. What else do you have down there? Oh, hello. All right, your first question. Okay, contestant number one, if you could go with me anywhere in the, anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Louis? Um, it would be anywhere you wanted to, because with a body like that, I'd go anywhere. <laughs> oh, Donnarama, good answer. Mm, I couldn't agree more. Heaven. All right, contestant number two, if you could go anywhere with Sam, where would it be and why? Uh, straight to bed, and you know why? Oh, you filthy thing. I think he's got a one-track mind. <laughs> Joe Old, yes. And now, contestant number three, if you were to go anywhere in the world with Sam, where would you go and why? Uh, seventh heaven. <laughs> Not 7-Eleven. <laughs> At Swinburne, we believe our students should always be one step ahead of the ever-changing needs of industry and commerce. A recent DEET survey showed that Swinburne has the highest rate of graduates employed for Victorian universities. Swinburne offers an exciting range of courses at both TAFE and higher education levels on campuses at Hawthorne, Paran and Mirrelbach. Swinburne University of Technology. Get an education and a job. Phone 03 214 8444. Introducing Mr Antenna, the new generation with new technology UHF, VHF antennas and satellite dishes. If your reception on channel 31 is less than perfect, a Mr. Antenna technician can check your existing installation. Mr. Antenna is backed by the most sophisticated service available from the minute you call. From as little as $129, Mr. Antenna can replace your existing antenna and improve your picture quality. So ring 131149. That's 131149. Get the picture. Communication Services, your complete one-stop media centre. Providing photographers, Graphic designers, video producers, desktop publishers, printers, multimedia producers, video conferencing, communication services, 
welcome to the first edition, the inaugural edition of Balls and All on MPC 31. We've got plenty lined up for you over the next few weeks. We've got interviews with all the sporting greats, people you know at home very well. But as you can see, we're on a bit of a shoestring budget here, only one microphone between the two of us, but we can get by okay because you can hear both of us very well. Jason, how are you? Good on you. Now, before we go to our first few sketches, Jason's got a bit of a joke for us, and after that, we're going to make you laugh a lot. <laughs> oh, kidding idiot. Okay, here's a few sketches coming at you right now. Kick it long! police van and we're out with these underfed fellas to find out what Melburnians think about trial by video. Now we've just got to find some people. Uh, football supporter. You a football supporter? No, but... Where do you come from? I'm from Israel. Just a minute, interview me. This is going to be a thing that you haven't think about. I'll interview you while you're being interviewed <laughs> me. Oh, I like this. I have my interview say. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's a double interview here. One's going to air on RMI TV and the other one's going to air in Israel. Hmm. It's nice to know we have such a big viewing range. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, can you tell me exactly what this interview is for? It's a, it's a television sports show. It's called Balls and All. <laughs> I think it's something like hand and camera. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> television sports show, but... But I think it's just some kind of student's camera because I've never seen a photographer that's laughing while taking pictures. We've all seen Robert Allenby's tips on the TV about golf and everything like that. Well, we think Dio Lehman's a pretty good golfer himself, so we sent him out to do some of his own tips. G'day, and welcome to Dita's Golf Tips. And we'll start with a swing. Nice, firm wrists. And don't forget that follow-through. Very important. Keep your eye on the ball, and I'll take that every time. Now, getting out of trouble. This is a shot that beginners have a lot of trouble with. I want to hook this ball around the tree from right to left. Easy shot when you practice enough. Now don't forget, tight wrists and follow through. We want to see this go from right to left in the hook fashion. <laughs> Come on boys, you said you wouldn't put that one in. We'll just do it again, right to left. Oh. Jane, you right there mate? Good. <laughs> Sorry about that one pal. Wasn't a bad shot, but that's not the way to do it. Now here we go, the approach to the green. Very important in lowering your score. Nice follow through, that's the way. Keep your eye on the ball. Looks good at this stage. We want it to pitch and run. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to see if that happened every time? Now be gracious in victories. Come forward, don't overdo it. You've won the match, now don't put your opposition into shame. Marvellous, that's the way to play golf. And don't forget when you're leaving the course, try chipping the ball through your car window. Great fun, and lowers your handicap. And I hope to see you on the golf course someday. Well, the game's about to start, so let's go. And here's the kickoff. Young Smith, the forward for America, gets the ball. He dodges one. He dodges two. My word. He dodges three. He's brought down in the box. Was that a penalty, Bob? That's got to be a penalty, Steve. Did you see that? He brought him down right in the box. Now, he gets a penalty shot for this, does he? I think it's one-on-one, -on -one, isn't it? He shoots a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, let's go to the first. He steps up to the box. He shoots from the spot. He scores! What a goal! What a goal! Does he get the second? Why would he get the second, Bob? Well, in basketball, <laughs> they get the second if they shoot the first. You idiot, this is soccer! 
You only get one shot. If you make the first, you don't get a second. I'm confused. As we go back to the kickoff. You for post about him, Adam. You are? Who do you bury for? Um, Essendon. Essendon? Oh, <laughs> Jason would like her. Here we go. What do you think about trial by video? <gasps> I don't know. <laughs> don't know. No, I don't know. What'd you say? No. Tri trial by video. I don't know. I can understand too much English, no. probably. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Are you a football supporter? Yeah. You are? Who do you bury for? Collingwood. Collingwood. <laughs> what do you think about trial by video? Ah, uh, it's alright, I suppose. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough? What do you think yeah. about Ross Oakley? I don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. Nah, nah, I'm not a major football fan, sort of just follow the dad and all that, so... I guess those magazines don't have too much football news in them, do they? Nah, they're pretty boring, actually. <laughs> yeah, any specials uh, on footy? I think we got football cards in here. Footy yeah. cards? You can yeah. Them? Yeah, 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 we'll have a look. Uh, yeah, there's basketball and football cards. Uh, cool. <laughs> Don't go buying too many of those now, you'll spend all your wages. Yeah, back at the kickoff, and America surging forward again, straight from the kickoff. And he got possession and going down the right hand flank. And he goes into the middle, he shoots, and he scores another one. Now he scored that from outside the bar. Is, how, many, how many points does he get for that, Bob? Oh, I, I guess he gets three points. He shot that one from outside the bar. That's a three-pointer, isn't it? Outside the perimeter, handcuffing. That's got to be three, don't it? Well, he didn't shoot it from inside the paint, so that should be a free goal. Can we get confirmation here, please? The scoreboard only says one. You mean to say you only got one for that? Yeah, and I think the Americans can be putting on a complaint about that one, Chip. Uh, that was one of the greatest shots from outside the box I ever seen, Bob. You said it, Steve. <laughs> You've probably seen about five or so minutes of the show so far. What do you reckon? Well, whatever you reckon, just remember, it's your taxpayer's money at work. Isn't that great to see it on TV? To Mr. and Mrs. Taxpayer, thank you. So it's early in the second half. Brazil 2-1 down as Bebeto gets the ball. Bebeto to Romero. Romero, oh, he's brought down now with a very crude tackle, Wendell. What, what do you, he pulled out the red card. Well, what the red card means, Hank? I don't know. Is that like like in ice hockey? They get like a five minute power play or something like that. Oh, well, he's, he's being sent off for the rest of the game. Can can they substitute him, Bob? I don't know. Is that a power play? Do you get like two minutes or something where you have one less on the field? I don't know. I mean, this, this, now this is an interesting point. I don't think soccer is taken off because I don't think it's a very American sport. You know what I mean, Hank? I have no idea what's going on out there. I mean, I know why the Americans aren't catching on to this game, Bob. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Cyril, that he comes back on after five minutes because you can't send the man off for more than five minutes. It's just, it ain't fair. You send him off for the whole game. Well, goddamn, smother my <laughs> face in honey and roll me in the mud. Goddamn, that just ain't fair. And that ain't soccer. Now, no advertising, all right? Yeah. Are you a football supporter? Yeah. Uh, and who you barrack for? Sorry? Who do you barrack for? Yeah, Australian team. Oh, Australian team. Yeah. Which one? Do you know which one? Oh, uh, no. 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 Oh, is, that a, is that a good job? Yes, it's a good job. It's a good job? Yeah. Oh, okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, America. Still 2-1 up here in the second half, coming towards the end of the game. This could be the biggest ball over in World Cup history, Bob. But the Brazilians are surging forward. Jean Pinto goes over to Romario. He shoots from outside this box and what a save by the keeper. Rejected by Miola. What a rejection. It rebounds off to the player there inside the key. But he shoots again for Brazil. It's another rejection. My word, this game can be exciting. It's as boring as old farts sometimes, but <laughs> God damn, it's exciting at the moment. USA, USA, USA. Oh, by the way, two block shots in two minutes, and you see Brazil on the fast break. My God, <laughs> what a turnover. Whoa. Hi, Jason here. This is my greatest football moment at Princess Park, playing for Essen against Carlton. Done my hamstring there, but still had the nails to pick up the ball. 50 out, dodged Wayne Johnson there, dominated my foot, took a second bounce, handballed it through Wow Jones's legs, picked it up through my legs, fantastic. Copped one there from Jimmy Buckley. Boy, he could hit in his day. Bounced again, ball didn't come up dodging around. Jimmy Buckley goes after me and gave me another one. Done me second hamstring here and went on. Pity I missed.
Hi, I'm Troy Bond from the Carlton Football Club, and I just want to say, uh, watch the new sports show, Bulls and All. Yeah, thanks, Troy. Dieter here. I'd like to tell you about my greatest time ever on a football field. Here at Royal Park against Old Severian. Took the ball in the square, got around the first post, and passed around the second post. I was out. The ball was in. Took my second bounce. Had a quick size up. Lovely blind turn right there. Sized them up. Had a shot from about 30 out. Coming back. Pity it hit the post. Well, that's it for the first episode. Hope you've had a great time watching it. We've had great fun making it. And uh, as you can see, we're, we're still on our shoestring budget. Just the one, <laughs> just the one microphone. And with me, I have... Kate, have you enjoyed your first show, Kate? Excellent. She's been working on it very well, and you'll see more of her in episodes to come as well as Cindy and, uh, and what's that other girl's name? Kelly. Cindy and Kelly. It's great. But we hope to be back within the next week, and don't forget Scotty Spitz will be along too, our work experience boy. He'll be along for the ride, so we hope you tune in soon for Balls and All. Kate, see you later. Thank you. The end Wondering about Melbourne's newest television station? Broadcasting weeknights, Melbourne Community Television brings you all sorts of programs made for the people of Melbourne. That's you, by the people of Melbourne. And that's you too. So tune in your telly and join in the fun of Public Access TV. It's right here at Melbourne Community Television. Communication Services your complete one-stop media centre. Providing photographers, graphic designers, video producers, desktop publishers, printers, multimedia producers, video conferencing, communication services, 660-2025. Introducing Mr Antenna. The new generation with new technology UHF, VHF antennas and satellite dishes. If your reception on channel 31 is less than perfect, a Mr. Antenna technician can check your existing installation. Mr. Antenna is backed by the most sophisticated service available from the minute you call. From as little as $129, Mr. Antenna can replace your existing antenna and improve your picture quality. So ring 13 11 49. That's 13 11 49. Get the picture.
Get your free chiropractic examination at the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic. Don't put up with back pain, headaches, neck and shoulder aches, loss of sleep due to pain, and many other musculoskeletal health problems. You don't need a referral, even if you've had a transport accident or work-related injury. For your free examination, phone the Diskin Chiropractic Clinic at 622 St Kilda Road, Melbourne. 510-3333. 510-3333. Introducing Mr. Antenna, the new generation with new technology UHF, VHF antennas and satellite dishes. If your reception on channel 31 is less than perfect, a Mr. Antenna technician can check your existing installation. Mr. Antenna is backed by the most sophisticated service available from the minute you call. From as little as $129, Mr. Antenna can replace your existing antenna and improve your picture quality. So ring 131149, that's 131149. Get the picture?